All right, this is Mr. Jernigan, and I'm here to talk to you about principles of engineering activity 3.1.1, input and output. This is the distance learning version, and it is the first big activity for unit three, which is about control systems. So if you've never done any program before, this is gonna be an amazing experience for you. Uh, in this program, you're going to create a pseudocode, which I'll get to that in a minute, to describe an algorithm, which is another word I will get to in a moment. Uh, you're going to create a, a computer program to implement an algorithm. In other words, you're going to create a computer program to make something happen. You're going to control a little car, vir a little virtual car. Uh, you're going to tell exactly what to do and how to respond to its environment. Um, when you're reading this, first of all, this is there's no answers here. This is just a walkthrough video to help you uh, get into this a little bit, especially if you've never done any programming before. Uh, in your engineering notebook, there's not going to be it's it's not like a series of steps. Write this, write this. Okay, do this calculation. Write this. This is going to be more exploratory, and you're going to write down um, just notes about what you're learning as you go. What did you notice happens? Um, and, and just it, there's some guidelines as to what you should write, but um, for the most part, this is uh, this is not a uh, s follow these steps and write what happens uh, and, and write the answers type activity. So, like I said, if you've never done any programming before, you're going to learn so much. This is going to be amazing for you. Um, now, this introduction is very important because you you should really read through carefully everything. This introduction talks about how robots are similar to humans if you consider that both inputs and outputs are, are used to sense and react to the world. In other words, both humans and robots take in information and we use that information to do stuff, to either react to it or to just do whatever. Um, most humans use five senses to perceive the world Based on the input of these senses, your brain makes up decisions to activate a response. Through muscle activation, the response can take many forms like speaking, moving your hand, or running. Robots behave similarly when the world is sensed through physical touch, ambient light intensity, in other words, what's the brightness around them, or distance to a solid object. The robot processor translates these inputs and activates a response by triggering a motor or a light emitter, or and anything else. In this activity, you're going to use the VexCode VR software to monitor inputs and control outputs to test the behavior of a virtual reality self-driving vehicle, the VR SDV, virtual reality self-driving vehicle. And here's, here's the cute little robot that you're going to be programming. Um, it's going to be a virtual reality version of this, of course. Um, but as you can see here, it's got a couple of funny looking things. Uh, right in the middle is what you might think of as the eye. This is the camera. Uh, it's a distance sensor, actually. Here you have uh, what might be considered the arms of the robot because it's, you know, it's this little robot. These are little bumper sensors. So you have a right bumper sensor and you have a left bumper sensor. And you gotta, when I say left and right, picture yourself as you are the robot. You're looking out at the world on this camera. So this would be your right hand, so to speak. This would be your left hand. Uh, you have a little pen sticking up. You have a um, just a little electromagnet. And here, kind of hidden from us, is a little camera that's looking straight down because it's always handy to use to see what's what what the little VRSDV is driving on. So this is the little, you're going to see a little uh, representation of this when you actually open the software up. This is the link to the VR uh, VEX code. It, you could click on it, and honestly, you could probably spend hours and hours and hours playing around with it. But let's focus on introduction, this activity, and what we need to do. So um, a little, still a little bit, I'd consider this a little bit of introduction, but if it's a physical structure or a virtual structure that's programmed, either way, um, common components of a structure are inputs and outputs. Okay, what, what, what's being sensed and what has to be done based on what's being sensed. Inputs include any data that is given to the program. Uh, pro, and it, so it doesn't have to be the outside world, it could be just other numbers or data that's been given to the, to the robot. Programs can be written to allow inputs to affect the results of the program. A program can also result in outputs, which can be data or actions, including tactile, audio, visual, text, you name it. Okay, so something, there's input, 
and that input is processed in the in the brain of the computer and then there's some sort of output that happens so that's that's how that's the basics of what we're going to be um, exploring here a first good step in programming is to become familiar with the available inputs and outputs that you may want to program so if you haven't yet go ahead and open the link to vexcode vr uh, if you have any trouble with that of course just let me know on the left side of the window here you know what i could just switch to it really quick on the left side of the window you're going to see all these little colorful buttons and you can just click on them and you're going to see all sorts of fun little things um, you want to click on the sensing code tab so here's a picture i, I, I don't need to go over there but uh, this is exactly what it sounds like so the little robot that you're going to program is is looking around using the uh the equipment that it is that has attached that is attached to it so the little bumpers that i showed you um the, the little camera all those things so you click on that um you, it's going to kind of well you'll see it it scroll down to to show you all these different options for sensors so um you can reset a time the brain sensing it's kind of broken up into um hopefully just little groups that make some sense some logical sense so uh this might not make some sense to us but uh reset timer uh it could the drive train is the uh the, the the what the wheels what's making the wheels turn okay so it, it senses is the driving done is the driving moving uh is it heading uh in a certain uh degree is it rotated drive heading is basically the direction it's going so what, what direction are you heading you could think of it that way uh is it rotated in a certain degree basically up is zero and then you could you know change your rotation um, and it senses what direction it's going basically uh, so heading and rotation are two different ways that you can uh, just get direction you can tell the robot to go in any direction you want bumper sensing um, you can change it to left bumper or right bumper so is is the button pushed if you were to look at that little let me scroll up a little bit uh, these are basically little buttons that can be pushed in and it could sense if the little buttons pushed in so the left or the right uh, and let's see what else oh the little camera how far is it from an object it's not just a camera it uses sensors to like send out signals and it bounces back and it can detect it in millimeters or other uh, units uh, the eye sensor so then this is this is the the camera part uh, is it near an object and you could click on this and i'll show you how to how to uh, determine what it means by near like there's actual measurements uh, does the front eye detect a color uh, does the front eye detect any kind of a brightness? What's the brightness of you know, like is it seeing something that's really dark or unlit? Is it going into a shadows? You know that kind of thing uh, And then it could look it senses the location in a little grid. Okay, these are all the sensors that are available to you on the little car so What you'd like to what just to kind of um, As a self-check as you go, you'll see these types of questions now and then and just do what it says is select the inputs that are available when you program the vr the virtual reality uh, sdv and you can click all of these that are you just basically look at the little center list and determine which of these are um and i'm just going to click all of them for funsies but which of these are it's not turning blue Ooh, it's not turning all the way blue odd so which one of these can be sensed by these uh by these sensors so go ahead and do that and this is where you're going to probably want to write down some notes uh, in, in your engineering notebook. Uh, the, just to kind of keep track, what does this VR SDV, what is it able to do? What is it able to sense? Okay, remember, it's like if it's a person, then we have the five senses. There's more than five senses, I know. Um, but we, we, we have eyesight, so we can see colors, we can see distance, we can, we can sense hearing, you know, we can sense sound, we can touch things. So just think of taste things and smell things. So those are the five classic senses. Uh, so just think of it. So the robot doesn't have a nose. It doesn't have, the, you know, it's got different tools with which to sense the world. So just remember that it's, it can sense the world. So jot these things down. Step three, uh, look at the names in the drop-down box. Okay, the bumper setting, sensing. Uh, as you can see, you can change it to the left or the right bumper. Um, these now look how it's written this is a type of computer code okay this is what's called camel case 
um, the capitalization. So basically, uh, a lot of times, uh, computer code, I'll just say it generally, computer code doesn't go well with spaces, the space between letters or space between words. Sometimes we'll mess up code, okay? It depends on the, on the language code you're using. So a common way to, <coughs> excuse me, common way to name things is this called what's called camel case. Another common way is underscore case. So instead of saying left bumper, right bumper, where you have every word is capitalized and so it's easy to read, you might have an underscore instead of using capital letters and, and everything would just be lowercase, okay? You can see which kind of naming structure that the, the VEX code uses based on this picture. So you would choose which one you think and you could check your answer, okay? So I can't unselect it, so I'm just gonna leave it there for no reason at all. All right, so there are other ways, um, but we're gonna stick to camel case. So whenever you write down notes, whenever you write down code uh, in this class using the, the VEX language that we're using, use camel case, okay? When you're talking about uh, things like this. Now, if you know what a variable is, for example, in a science class like physics, uh, a lot of times, or in, in other math situations, we'll use single letter variables, like D stands for displacement or distance. Um, v stands for velocity. So these are essentially going to be long versions of variables. Okay, just kind of keep that in mind. What, which bumper is being pressed? Oh, the left bumper. Oh, the right bumper. It's just kind of telling us which one is which. Okay. Um, when it comes to actually naming files, we will, I'll, I'll discuss that with you in class more, okay? Uh, honestly, underscore case is, is perfectly acceptable, um, but oops, I highlighted that. Let's, so we can talk about that in class. Now, again, keep taking notes, write down things about camel case and, and all that. Um, make sure you are uh, keeping track of all this stuff because you're gonna, you're gonna want this later. Um, click through the other code um, to, to find which might produce outputs. Which of these look like they might tell the robot to do something? Mm, there we go. Uh, so you can kind of just click through and it's all color coded. This control thing might be sensing. Okay, you can kind of tell based on what it looks like. Just look for verbs. Okay, look for verbs. So you're looking for a code that is going to produce outputs. Outputs, like I said, a big clue is that there's a verb involved. Drive, turn, stop, set drive velocity to. Okay, all these things are kind of verbs. They're telling the robot what to do. Okay. Uh, so in your engineering notebook, it'd be a really good idea to maybe write down a sampling of them. You don't have to write everything down, but uh, give, a, give some examples about what an output might be in the, in the code. Um, then go ahead and answer these questions. Uh, click, you know, what, which, uh, which do you have access to? Select all that apply. Okay, so, and then you could check your answers. Um, now here's a picture of the robot again. Uh, this one is, I'm just going to uh, tell you the answers because it's not super apparent. It's not like you could tell here. Um, these are the, again, we're looking at the robot and I've been talking about sensors. And, and so if you think of a human, we've got our eyes, we've got our ears, we've got our nose and everything else. Uh, the bumpers right here and right here are <clears throat> what it uses to kind of touch. So you could just drag this out and put it by one of the bumpers, okay? This is the camera, the front eye sensor, which you might call probably a better word than a camera because it's not really a camera. You can't hook it up and like see what it's seeing, but it's a sensor. Uh, you have here uh, a pen, pen sticking up and we, we may get to that later. Uh, th these two, there's two little blocks here and each block is a sensor. Uh, it's not super apparent. I'm just gonna tell you the bigger one is an electromagnet. And the one down, the littler one is uh, the down eye sensor. So think of it as a camera pointing downward, looking more for like dark 
lines or contrasts, uh, looking for looking for differences in in the in the um, on the road. Okay, so like if it's driving along, this is looking for a sudden change in color, for example. Might be useful if you're designing a self-driving car, for example, to keep an eye on the the lines in the road. That's the kind of thing we're talking about here. So you could drag the down eye sensor over to that. Uh, this question actually has a second question, so you're going to have to scroll over and answer that one uh, as best you can. And when you're done, just click click submit and get your answer. And then maybe you know jot. jot. You don't have to write down the entire thing, but just maybe jot a, something down in your engineering notebook of what you learned from these questions. All right, step six, sensing time. Now here's where you're gonna actually do stuff. You're gonna to wanna to click the tutorial button at the top left corner. Click the getting started tutorial and watch the video for an orientation to the programming environment. Click the back button to return to the programming environment. Let me show you what I mean. So especially if you've never done anything like this, these tutorials are gonna be invaluable. So I don't know if you saw where I clicked it. It's right here, top left corner of your screen click on that and there's all these tutorials it's amazing resources um, if you watch too many you're going to get lost because you need to you need to basically click a tutorial and then watch it learn try it and then move on and i would really recommend you just kind of working through all these tutorials and learning new things as you go so you're going to want to click on getting started there's a video that's going to play for you Okay, um, when you're done with it, it says click back, but I don't think that's necessary here. You could just literally X out of the video and you're good to go. Now, if you're in the tutorial section and you don't wanna click on one of these, you could click back and it'll bring you back to this part. So maybe that's what they're referring to. Okay, but really, you're gonna to wanna to take your time on this. This isn't an activity you could just bang through and be like, oh, Mr. Jern says, you know, go to step six and just, okay, I'm done with step, step six. All right, see, that's not how it works. This activity is not, I'm not looking for, um, there's not a lot gonna be tangible that you could turn into me, meaning there's not something that you could point to and say, hey, look, I did the work. This is gonna be a, a very, uh, like a, um, a, a learning experience mostly, and we're going to build upon this. So we're gonna come back to it, and if you, if you skimp now, you're gonna be just completely lost later. So really, work through the tutorials that they talk about. I would actually recommend this moving and removing blocks, okay? And then maybe driving and moving back forward and backwards. These first three, do them, <laughs> do them. Maybe maybe do turning then too, I, but, um, but definitely, definitely at the very minimum, I would say these first three are, are something you just, just work through it, okay? I'm not gonna check that you did it. There's no quiz gonna be on it. Um, but to be able to program and, and do this stuff, these first three especially are going to be invaluable. Okay, and then you're going to want to keep going. <laughs> but maybe not yet, you know, kind of master these first three. Um, you can do those first three, I think, and then come back to step mm, seven. Okay, that's what I would recommend. Oh, can I add notes here? Mm, I think, oh, add a note. I'm just going to do this. It says here, use the tutorial area to learn more about VEX as your notes evolve. I would say do the first three tutorials. Okay, and I'm not to do them. Complete the first two tutorials. First three tutorials. All right. So I'm just going to write that out so that you can see that. I'm going to highlight it. I'm going to point at it with my finger like, do it. Do it. All right. Perhaps if I hit save. Ooh. All right, so I don't think you're gonna see this, but I see it, um, just to remind me that I said it. Do the first three, complete the first three tutorials. Trust me on this. This is one of my favorite units because I think this is like learning to program, unit three, learning to program is just an amazing skill that you can use. And so, there's so many, of even if you don't go into engineering, there's so many different, um, just so many different uh, just ways that programming can be used in, in so many careers. So when you're ready, click on the playground button in the upper right of the VEX VR window, then select Castle Crasher, Castle Crasher from the drop down list. Okay, I'm telling you, you're gonna have a much better time with this if you've completed the first couple tutorials. 
So you can see a picture here. I'm just gonna go back, oh, so go back, see? So in the upper right hand corner, uh, playground. So uh, I've already selected Castle, Cra Castle Crasher, but there's all sorts of fun little things you could try here. Uh, Castle Crasher, because that's what the directions say. Now I'm gonna point out something to you. This question mark right here. I'm gonna point out to you now, I'll probably bring it up again later. Super useful. Okay, if you got a question about anything, click on it and then click on the block that you're curious about. Stop driving, like for example. It'll tell you what it does. It'll tell you how to use it and it'll give you an example about how to use it. Okay, here, let me click on a slightly more um, mundane one. Drive, okay? It tells you what it is. I'm just gonna give you, ex like you could go forward or in reverse, okay? Fairly obvious, right? But still, some of these aren't as obvious as others. But it's going to tell you how to use it and then it's going to well there's not really an example because it's it is kind of a basic one but i just want to point out that question mark to you you could click on the question mark to make it go away okay so there it is the question mark so you are now in castle crasher and so i just want to point out a couple of things down here is your robot i don't think i can make this any bigger no i think i've tried this um, so Castle Crash, here's your robot. You're looking at it from above. Um, this, th these are just blocks in the way. There's a red boundary, okay? And, well, we're gonna try something here. So not, not much to say for, for step seven, okay? Let's just do what it says. There's nothing to write down, I don't think. Step eight, review the sensor output display. It shows values that the sensors are reading, currently set to default values. Okay, so in this, well, I'll change color, reset, there we go. Uh, we have heading in degrees. So if you think of, uh, if you think of mm, the, the coordinate plane system, the, the top will be, well, you could play with this. Right now it's facing up, forward, we'll call it. It's, it's facing toward this direction, what we might call north. So north is zero degrees. East to the right is 90 degrees. Okay, so it goes by 90 every time, all right? And uh, you just, you can wanna play around with it. So somewhere there's a way to change the heading. We'll get to that later. Rotation, sounds, was that, how much is the thing rotated? Uh, the front eye, it's, at, it's checking to see, is there an object right in front of the front eye? And right now it's saying false, because right now there is nothing in front of the front eyeball, the front eye sensor. What's the color of that object? Well, there is none, so it's saying none. The down eye, it's looking for the same thing. Is it finding anything weird? No, false. What's the color of it? None, okay, because it's just on the blank, blank, um, blank thing. Location, where is it at? Okay, so X zero, because again, if you think of it as a grid, it's sitting at zero, all right? And it's Y is negative 800 millimeters. So that's because X is horizontal, and right now it's right in the middle at zero, not positive, not negative. Why? It's negative 800 millimeters because it's negative downward south to the 800. So again, we'll, just, just a reference. You don't have to memorize it or anything. Location angle. Uh, is the bumper being uh, pressed right now? The left bumper is not being pressed. False. Or is the bumper for the, the right bumper being pressed? No. False. Okay. It'll say true if it's pressed. The distance. 557 millimeters. millimeters. That's, I think, reading the distance to this middle barrier here so let's go back to this that's that's what step eight is about maybe you want to write that down take some notes okay step nine use the diagonal camera button on the bottom right to change the point of view to better see the, the playground so let's do that I'm gonna click on this oh yeah, look it's a three-dimensional rendering of the castle you could go you could click on different things um, you can you can uh, look top down Look diagonal, you could look at from the point of view of the actual robot. So you could play around with that, but then end up clicking like that for step nine. Not, that's, and, and this picture is showing you what happens when you do that, okay? Step 10, not, there's, so there's nothing really to write down for that. You could just jot down what happened. Step 10, okay, now, this is important. A lot of people think uh, programming is just sitting down on the computer and typing a lot of strange code, okay? There is an aspect, that is an aspect to it, but good coding starts with 
the natural language description of what you want to happen, and then something that's called pseudocode, which is sort of a halfway point between uh, like a natural human language and robot code or, or computer code. So let's take a look at the, what we want to happen. Here's a natural language version of what we want to happen. We want to have the VR SDV drive forward, period. Then when a bumper is pressed, have the car stop driving. Sounds relatively easy, right? Drive forward until it basically crashes into something. <laughs> okay. So how do you put that into what's called pseudocode? Okay, pseudocode, think of it as a list of commands. Very, very, very simple commands. Okay, like so simple that you can't be broken down any further. Okay, one verb usually, one verb, maybe a little bit of a, of a if then statement type thing. So look, when start, so here's the pseudocode of what we just said. When started, drive forward, wait until a bumper is pressed, stop driving. Okay pseudocode. I tell you, going from uh, writing down a natural language version of what you would like to happen, then writing a pseudocode version of what's, uh, what you would like to happen is going to just help you tremendously when you actually go to use and write code, computer code. Okay. So, because what you're doing is you're planning. And I know nobody likes planning. Like in English class or whatever, they always write, the, write a, 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 a rough draft for, no, write a, what is it? Um, like the bullet point plan. And I didn't like that. I, planning is difficult for us, I think. I'm just gonna speak broadly because we're not seeing a product yet. We wanna jump straight to the end. We wanna just start doing something. And I would say as an engineer or anybody who does anything that's complicated in any way, planning is going to be more than half the battle, okay? So just keep that in mind. Just take your time on this. Okay. So we're going to follow this pseudocode of what we want the vehicle to do. We want when started, drive forward, wait until the bumper is pressed and stop driving. All right. Guess what you're going to do right now? You are going to drag out and connect the blocks, to, woo, put that back, to create an algorithm based on the natural language and pseudocode. So what this means is, and obviously you could check your code here, you could just click on that. What you're gonna to wanna to do here is, I've already got something here because I've been playing around with it. So what you're gonna to wanna to do is drag out, this is not what you wanna do, um, but you basically, and if you've done the, the tutorial, like I said, here, let me get that out of the way. You can drag these things out and they just kind of snap together, okay? And if you don't want something, just drag it back out. You could drag it and set it aside if you want. If you want to just de delete it, just kind of drag it away, okay? So um, what you want to do is make the vehicle do this. And when you're ready, if it doesn't work, check your, click this and check your code, okay? Write down what happened. Maybe write down your experience here okay what worked what didn't work um 12 press play make sure it does work okay make sure it works you view the sensor reading to make sure it's 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 behaving correctly okay so when you press a button it should do something you should check the readings now 13 now you notice i'm not doing it right now this is on you so if you got trouble with this just let me know let your teacher know Step 13, in your code, use a drop down. So you're gonna basically wanna change it to the other bumper, okay? So we click on that. This is, let's see, where is that? Uh, wait until, so it's yellow. Um, I'm looking for, mm, wait until a bumper, what color is that bumper? Um, so probably way under sensing, right? Distance, eye, location, bumper. So I'm gonna drag this out because now I am actually kind of doing, I'm just gonna set that aside. So I'm gonna change it from left bumper, I could choose right bumper, right? And then I could press play. Hey look, it's working for me. Wink, and it stopped. I guess stop, stop re re woo, refresh, and it went back to the original. So that's basically how you do it, okay? Play around with it, you can't break it, okay? You cannot break it. Um, and 
jot down in your engineering notebook, did the code execute as you expected? Why or why not? In other words, did the code do what you expected it to do? What, why? Okay, just, re and then go on to 14, replace the bumper pressed question mark block with a front eye near object. Okay, replace, uh, do what this says, and, and you're just going to just drag these things out. So wait until, so distance, uh, what did I want? Front eye is near object question mark. So you're gonna to wanna to look for that front eye near object, front eye near object. Where would that be? It's probably under control then. Nope. Well, let me read the direction. The bumper press with front eye near object block from the eye sensing code of the sun. Okay, see, we read the directions and we're good. Where is it, eye sensing? There it is. So front eye is near object. So I'm gonna grab that out. I can just take that, take that little thing away, dump it out there. I can just pop that in the little, Mm, slot and you'll know it's going to snap in there it goes it'll click into place you hear that click so read through it okay replace it do what it says okay then after you've done those and again don't just go boom 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 make sure you answer these questions try it out okay this is experiential this is, this is your time to um experiment this is your time to make mistakes okay the worst that's going to happen is the little robot's gonna not do what you want it to do. All right, you can always, you, you can't break it. You cannot break it. So try these things, try it out, try different things. Step 16, suppose you want the little robot, the vehicle to reach the red border on the left and stop there. Write some pseudocode for this algorithm in the space provided. Whoa, pseudocode. Okay, so let's go, let's kind of look at the border. Oh, hey, that's not right, so let's, um, not the behind, there we go, ooh, hey, refresh. Hmm. Let me refresh, there we go, I refreshed the whole page. Uh, so I wanna... And you notice even though I refreshed the page, everything kind of stayed where it was, even the stuff that was just laying around. So now, think of it this, you want this robot to kind of go forward, and then you need to turn either left or to the right, and then it's gonna have to, what, stop when it hits the red border? Let's look over our shoulder here. It looks like the red border, is flat so just keep that in mind what do you want it to do okay so think in pseudocode a series of the smallest possible steps okay do this do that look for this if this you know um, drive until something okay look at the pseudocode that we had from before and use that as an example of what pseudocode is, okay? It's important, because that pseudocode, it gets translated pretty really easily into, into uh, algorithms and, and computer language, okay? Write this down in your notebook. Got it down in your notebook, okay? Run the program to test it. Here's a hint, all right? You can see the hint. Well, you know what? You can read it if you want the hint, okay? And then check your code. So here, now when you click check your code, that is one impossible answer. If you check your code, if you use this to help you along, try it, put it in there, make sure it works. When, you, when, when it works, tweak it, change it. Try a different way. Try something different after you've, after you've checked your code, okay? Just a thought, because again, this is all about learning. And reflect on your algorithm. Jot this down. Was your pseudocode correct? Did thinking about the pudocode help you identify details in the code? Again, think in the simply you're thinking in the simplest possible steps, which is what you need to do when you're talking about programming a robot to do something. Because it doesn't know your intention. It only knows what you specifically tell it to do. Okay. Planning an algorithm, the last part here. I believe it's the last part after, you know, before the questions. So the way you see and experience things in the world is different from the way a computer senses the same thing. Uh, like it says here, some things you perceive have degrees of differences to describe them, like a fuel tank. There are many ways to quantify the amount, full, halfway, three quarters, almost empty, many more. Um, we should need to get gas now. <laughs> so a fuel tank example is an example of what's called analog data okay other examples include quantities like sound okay so how loud is that really loud sort of loud is it quiet 
time. Well, it kind of passes. And acceleration. Okay, it's changing speed. In contrast, computers used what's called discrete data, also referred to as digital data. I'll explain what that means. Digital inputs qu uh, quantities jump from one value to another without representing the values in between. So if you think of analog as like a smooth transition from, uh, from one value to another one, analog is like steps. So a light switch represents discrete digital data. It's either on or it's off. So imagine how inconvenient it would be if the fuel tank was represented discreetly, either full or empty, with no values in between. Okay, that's the problem with digital versus analog. Using what you have observed, what you have observed and programmed, see if you could identify the sensors as analog or digital. Ooh. So some of these sensors that the, the robot has are analog. It could sense a, a vast variety of things, a, a big variety of, of, of uh, different data. Other sensors are digital. It's either on or off. So what you gotta do is just drag these over up to what you think, which of these is analog, which of these is digital. The bumpers, is it analog? Well, drag it over there. Is it digital? Drag it over there. Okay, remember, analog is like a, like a many values in between. Digital, either yes or no. Zero or one. Okay, I'll give you a hint here when you're all done. Here, let me reset the labels. When you're all done, you can click Submit, and it'll tell you if you're right. Now, it is important here, this little note here at the at very end. It's important to have clear notes on inputs, outputs, types of sensors, analog, digital, what they all do and programming in your engineering notebook at this point, okay? You notice, like it says, take notes, but there were no like notes, so to speak. So make sure that you have an understanding of these concepts, okay? And that you have them written in your engineering notebook. I'm telling you, you there, there was not a lot like uh, of stuff to just like, all right, answer question number 17 and write down your answer in the notebook. This is not that kind of, this is an experiential, activity and you need to have the experience and you jot down your notes of what happened in your engineering notebook okay because we're going to be building on this and we're going to be doing some really cool things going forward all right make sure you answer the conclusion questions and then you're good all right i hope you're enjoying this i hope you're learning a lot i hope you're this is gonna i'm, I'm so excited about this this unit unit three so take care have a wonderful day bye